Hello, and welcome to the University of Rochester Orchestra's virtual gala and fundraiser. My name is Dr. Rachel Waddell, and I'm the Director of Orchestral Activities for the Arthur Sotts Department of Music here on the River Campus. Please take this opportunity to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and where you're tuning in from. Even though all of the videos you'll see this evening are pre-recorded, we would love for you to react, comment, ask questions, and interact. We have members of our orchestras and Oberlin Conservatory joining us, and I know they won't be shy in sharing their stories and thoughts. I'd like to begin with a brief overview of this evening's gala and performance. We will be sharing four pieces with you, two from each orchestra. On November 14th, our symphony orchestra recorded Debussy's Dans Sacré et Dance Profane with pianist Jacob Rose. This piece is originally written for harp and was programmed this semester with that in mind. However, unfortunately, several issues prevented our harpist from joining us, and Jacob readily jumped in to learn it on the piano. We also recorded Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Four Novelettes for String Orchestra and Percussion. A week later, on November 21st, our chamber orchestra recorded Clara Schumann's Concert Sots in F minor with Dr. Anna Maiman on piano and Tchaikovsky's Serenade for Strings. We will hear all four pieces this evening and in between there'll be commentary, reflections, and discussions about our fundraiser. This evening's virtual performance would not have been possible without the help of University of Rochester's audio and music engineering program, and especially senior lecturer Stephen Rusner, who recorded and mixed all this evening's performances. Our students were given the opportunity to make live recordings. Recording offered an opportunity to find purpose in a semester without live audiences and provided an invaluable chance to our students many of whom had never been in a recording situation before. To continue our collaboration and provide recording opportunities to students in the music department and beyond, including the opportunity for large-scale mastered recording projects, we are using this evening's gala to fundraise towards the installation of a Dante network in Upper Strong that will tie us directly into our recording studio. The total cost of this project is approximately $20,000, but we are confident that with your help and sharing, we can raise a quarter to half of that this evening. We'll share more about this project later. For now, please take a moment to text your friends and family and tell them to tune in right now so they can take part in this evening's special performance. Thank you. I, I really loved being able to work with the orchestra on the Debussy this, this semester. It was, it was new to me since I, I had never played a piece by Debussy before, but it was really great to, to collaborate uh, with the orchestra. And I mean, it was fun because the, the part that I was playing was actually written for harp. So it has like all the flowy, like the, the first movement is a... Now, when the harp just enters, it's it was really um, f it was fun to to play around with the different ways of like rolling the chords um, and trying to like make it sound like like a harp instead of a piano. That that was really my goal. And of course, the both the piano and the harp have have the strings, but with the piano is obviously of course a percussive instrument. Um, so it was challenging in that regard, especially in the. The second movement, you have the the piano solo, the that part, that that theme, that melody was really uh, challenging. Not just because of the you have like the twos over threes and all of that technicality, but also just to make it sound so like erythral uh, in a way that that was also challenging, but. Good and overall, I'd say I, I really grew to love the piece. Uh, really, from when I when I first heard it, um, yeah, it it was really uh, an exciting time, and especially during during COVID, it was really nice to still be able to make music with with the orchestra. And yeah, I it's gonna be great.
Bravo, Jacob, and Urso members. WC's music is like a whole other landscape of sound, and we really had fun exploring that this semester. I'd like to take this opportunity to offer you a snapshot of the many projects that our orchestras and chamber ensembles were involved in this semester. Although COVID-19 presented many challenges, still presents many challenges, our students continued to be provided with opportunities and create and participate in music. In many ways, our students got a more comprehensive and holistic picture of what it means to be a 21st century musician. In addition to performing this repertoire, we embarked on a virtual collaboration with Oberlin Conservatory. This resulted in our performance of Captain Beethoven, which premiered last week on December 15th. Now, if you missed it, don't worry. I'll be joined by my colleague, Dr. Tiffany Chang, a bit later, and we'll include links where you can catch our performances of Beethoven and Captain Marvel. I think it's also important to note that this collaboration included a virtual residency with composer Ralph Lewis, who challenged us to think about new performance mediums, including YouTube and Zoom. And we also shared virtual sessions with guests like composers Jennifer Beller and Joseph Jones and conductor Maestra Joanne Folletta. In addition, our students created a virtual postcard series this year. Students had an opportunity to explore solo and chamber repertoire across multiple genres to create performances for patients in hospitals. We created 26 postcards for the University of Rochester Medical Center this semester. We also began a composer spotlight series in which students chose to explore traditionally underprogrammed and underrepresented composers with the hope of challenging and building our knowledge of the orchestral canon. Our students created 37 spotlights, including interviews with several living composers you can check out these profiles and watch these interviews by visiting our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash urorchestras. Taken together, a theme of the semester became what a 21st century orchestra and orchestral musician looks like and what responsibilities we have beyond our own artistry to our community and to our industry. Nearly all orchestral music performances are focused on the music of dead white European men. And of course, much of this music is fantastic. It's what many of us grow up learning how to perform, but it gives the impression that only dead white European men wrote music. And this simply is not true and proves ill representing of the diversity, the wealth of diversity of music that has been and continues to be composed throughout music history. Perhaps even more dangerously, it gives the false impression that the classical canon and with it, the industry of classical music is unmalleable and fixed. Yet every day we hear music, whether live or via recording, that draws us in with our ability to hear our own stories interwoven into the musical fabric of what we hear. Music speaks to us because it is very much alive, and it is our responsibility to present music with all the complexities, intricacies, beauties, and diversities that remind us of what it means to be alive and to be human. This semester, we performed Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Four Novelette for String Orchestra and Percussion. As you will soon hear, this is an incredible work full of rhythmic conflict, unpredictable harmonic twists, and lush melodies. Yet, it is wildly underrepresented in recordings and on concert stages. As with many of us, what you're about to hear may be your first exper experience or exposure to Coleridge Taylor's Four Novelette or maybe even Coleridge Taylor at all, but we can promise you it will not be your last. Enjoy.
Congratulations to our Urso musicians on that fabulous performance. I'd like to extend a special shout out to concertmaster Alyssa Moy and principal cellist Anthony Labarca for their solos. As I mentioned previously, the performance you just heard was recorded in Upper Strong Auditorium and edited by Grammy-winning mixing engineer Stephen Rusner from the University of Rochester's Audio and Music Engineering program. You may remember Stephen from our virtual balloon-popping 1812 Overture performance that reached over 50,000 people. The opportunity to work with Stephen again saved our orchestra's experience this semester. Instead of producing a concert or a live stream to an empty concert hall, students embarked on projects for the first time in the UR orchestra's history. These included collaborating and virtually performing with colleagues at Oberlin Conservatory, recording repertoire in a concert hall and in a recording studio, and of course one of these works you just heard, Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Four Novel Latin for String Orchestra and Percussion. There are only three complete performances readily available. The ability to record and share music by an underrepresented composer enables students to actively engage, challenge, and add to the traditional orchestral canon. In speaking with our orchestra students, the opportunity to record was the highlight of their semester. Now we need your help. To make it possible to offer high quality recording opportunities, we need to connect our recording studio and Gavit Hall to Upper Strong Auditorium. We would like to continue to build our relationship with the audio and music engineering program by acquiring infrastructure and assets that enable future performances to be recorded and mixed by students in the AM&E program. In addition, it enables other recording opportunities, including chamber ensembles, other music ensembles, both student and faculty led, lectures, panel discussion, and guest ensembles. In addition, this would provide an educational opportunity for AM&E students to learn how to record a variety of ensembles and repertoire, making them more marketable to work within a variety of settings. This would also open opportunity for potential community collaboration by allowing mentorship for high school age students interested in audio and music engineering. Many performing organizations foster relationships between their production departments and high school programs, which in turn builds opportunity for recruitment and reinvestment in the University of Rochester. While we do offer live streams of our performances, the focus is almost exclusively on the visual component and the audio is often poorly balanced compared to the hall's acoustics. Further, the more high quality the recordings we can make, the more we can contribute to the classical canon and help our students perform and create projects that are meaningful to them. To make this happen, we need to run a dedicated point-to-point -point ethernet line from Strong to Gavitz Hall recording studio using a Dante network. This would also require us to purchase Dante enabled equipment for performing with the priority being Upper Strong Auditorium. The cost of this project is $20,000, and while it may seem steep, in reality, it's a minimal cost and risk for the opportunity to build educational community performing opportunities and collaborative experiences for our students. We would like to raise at least $5,000 to $10,000 through our virtual gala tonight. If we can do this, we are confident that we can approach our department program and the University of Rochester and other potential donors in order to close the gap. No amount is too small in helping us to achieve this goal. To donate, please click on the donate button or visit this link. Be sure to specify that the money is to be used for the UR orchestras. We really appreciate your help this season and thank you for your gift and generosity. Now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Stephen Rusner, who will tell you more about this project. Hi, my name is Steve Rusner. I am a lecturer in the audio and music engineering program here at the University of Rochester. Um, I'm going to try to explain why we would like a Dante network uh, between our facilities, both in the music department and in the audio and music engineering department. Right now, our main studio for the AME program is in Gavit Hall, which is across campus from Strong Auditorium and the chapel. There are three separate buildings. 
uh, that we'd like to connect to Gavit Hall. So what uh, Dante Network would do is be able to record remotely. So we could hang microphones and put uh, equipment in Strong Auditorium, both the upper and lower portions, as well as in the chapel that then can be recorded in Gavit Hall in the studio. So those microphone lines would be sent via ethernet cables over a network into Gavit Studio. So a Dante network basically is a uh, protocol that allows us to record remotely uh, and we'd be able to record all the concerts on campus, uh, speeches, lectures, anything that goes on in Strong Auditorium or the chapel to be recorded high quality in Gavit Recording Studio by our students in the AME program. Thanks. Before we listen to Erko's performance, I'd like to take a brief opportunity to discuss our Captain Beethoven digital collaboration with Oberlin Conservatory and my colleague, Dr. Tiffany Chang. This virtual performance involved over 200 collaborators, including 124 instrumentalists, 27 of whom participated entirely virtually. UR Orchestra students participated on an arrangement of music from Pinar Toprock's soundtrack to Captain Marvel, arranged by Tiffany, and a performance of Beethoven's choral fantasy. This performance premiered last Tuesday, December 15th. We are not going to be showing you that footage again this evening, but I've included the links here, which you can watch again after our virtual gala is over, of course. I also encourage you to share these links with your family and friends and to consider these performances when making your gift to our fundraiser. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Tiffany now, who will talk to you a bit more about the project, and then we will have the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Anna Maimon, piano soloist for Ergo's performance of Clara Schumann's Konzertsatz in F minor. It is remarkable to think that exactly one year ago, none of what we've been able to achieve this semester would have even been imaginable. Just by pure will and determination, we have adjusted so quickly to digital content and remote collaboration. Envisioning and carrying out our joint projects was clear proof that we are all stronger and better together, and we will support each other through each trial and tribulation of this time. In fact, we have already triumphed in presenting together something that is truly unique without being apologetic for the imposed limitations, but rather fully embracing the ingenuity that results from having to pivot and to adjust to whatever the circumstances give us. Hello, my name is Anna Maiman, and I had the privilege of being the soloist for this particular performance of the Clara Schumann concert sets. This year has truly been a difficult one for everyone with social restrictions placed on us with COVID-19. However, as is most frequently the case, music truly came to the rescue, allowing us not to just perform the work with each other, but also to share it with the listeners through the various available technologies. As an art, music is always praised for being a direct form of communication between the performers and the listeners, augmenting the message intended by the composer through the medium of sound. But this year, music's unique quality of uniting musicians in an ensemble is what stood out to me the most. It is particularly poignant that even this concert sets is a collaboration spanning over 150 years between Clara and her unfinished manuscript and a pianist who completed it and subsequently published the movement in the late 20th century, allowing us to enjoy it today. The piece itself is full of communication, not just between the performers and the audience, but between the musicians themselves, maintaining the melodic dialogue through intricate chamber music throughout the piece. The nuances of emotion, passion, and sheer technical prowess that this piece requires made it truly a pleasure to be able to engage in this performance and carry on the conversation with the fellow musicians in the orchestra. I certainly hope that you enjoy the final product as much as we enjoyed the process of making it. Thank you.
This process was filled with a lot of hurdles, challenges, and steep learning curves. Specifically for me, those learning curves were in the visual and audio components, so basically everything. It involved me becoming quite intimate with the process of video editing. Since I had no experience with anything that extensive previously, I pretty much just set up a bunch of camera angles with the help of our volunteer videographers and hoped for the best. But piecing all those together in a meaningful way was a whole different ballgame because, of course, not all the shots are created equal. And knowing the music, sometimes you really wanted X shot of this musician at this point, but no one was really directing the cameras in that way, so you didn't necessarily get that shot. And so when I went back to look at the footage, there were some things I could use and some things that I just couldn't or footage that was missing or corrupted. Um, and so for a couple of pieces, we actually wound up with just two camera angles. So it became more of a creative exercise on what to do with very little. I completely respect the hundreds and hundreds of names that you see go by in movie credits. Every single one of them are needed. And the other big process was actually being, I've done recording sessions as a performer, but never as a conductor. And so understanding and helping the students and the performers to understand the difference between doing more of a live recording situation and more of a recording situation that could take days and days and days where you very much individually control each musician's sound and output and you do little sections over and over and over again. So I think those are two really great experiences for all of us to take away, myself included. And in the end, we made it. Stella here, the principal bassist in Urso. Um, this year it was really difficult to rehearse because of COVID, but one thing that I think stood out as you know, an overall positive was just the ability at the start of the semester to really learn about the other people in orchestra, my peers, because as a bassist, you know, we're usually off to the side doing our own thing, but we took the time since we couldn't jump right into rehearsals to really get to know the other people, their majors, their other interests, etc. And I really appreciated that. And I even got to learn a little bit more about my own section during my sectionals. And I think that that was really like the highlight of the orchestra COVID experience for me. With the big full orchestra, we played some some incredible, impressive pieces in the past. But I think often with it just being such a big ensemble, you can let yourself kind of go along for the ride. And this term, we really had to reset that, that we started each in our own bubble with distancing, with masks, um, with some very cool, but largely unfamiliar music, and then had to rebuild each connection out to each other member of the orchestra, I had to reach across that distance with our ears and with our sound and kind of find again what it means to play together as an orchestra and to put all of those little connections to really make something together into place. My favorite piece that we played this semester was for a novel Latin by Samuel Coleridge Taylor in Urso. I admit before playing his piece in Urso, I hadn't heard of him. So when looking him up, I learned that he was referred to as the African Mahler. But I hope that playing his piece and recording it in Urso helps people know that he's not just the African Mahler, he's Samuel Coleridge Taylor and he deserves to be recognized. Even though I participated virtually this semester and really missed the in-person camaraderie, I nonetheless found Urso to be a musically and intellectually enriching experience. I enjoyed delving deep into the music and life of Samuel Coleridge Taylor, who is an incredibly inspiring and talented musician. I also enjoy discussing, listening to, and analyzing pieces of music with others in the listening parties, and I'm very grateful for the opportunities to creatively collaborate with Oberlin this semester, and I am super excited about being able to participate in person in the spring. I think everything that has occurred this year and past semester, I am really enjoyed participating in orchestra the most. In the past years and probably the near future, I can't think of a time where online virtual coaching was necessary or online recordings and stitching them together to create an orchestral um, concert was needed. 
but I'm glad that this opportunity arose to participate in such an experience. It was interesting to participate in online lectures, in online coachings, and see the troubles all of that might bring along. But it was good to work together and to create something new that can be presented in an online format for everyone. I was very thankful to hear that we had at least one in-person class this semester, which was orchestra. I had a reason to be back on campus for my studies. It gave me a newfound motivation to do better and to practice more for the rehearsals because every moment was more precious than the year before. I had the privilege of leading the chamber orchestra's second violin section, and for that I'm eternally grateful to my colleagues. And I'm glad that we get to be together during the pandemic to generate and offer music that soothes weary souls. My name is Jack and I'm a cellist in the University of Rochester Chamber Orchestra. While it was unfortunate that brass and wind players couldn't play in the orchestra this semester, I really enjoyed being able to play string-only repertoire, especially being able to play Tchaikovsky's Serenade for Strings, which is one of my all-time favorites. Um, it was also a cool experience being able to play in a recording studio and being able to produce a high-quality record of all the hard work we did this semester. Rehearsing during COVID was pretty weird. Um, we all just sit separately so you didn't have a stand partner. Um, I think we usually like rely on a stand partner, but now it was just very individual. Um, and especially in the chapel, you couldn't really hear anyone except for your section or the section right next to you. Um, so I think the recording process when we were um, in Strong was super weird and different because I could actually hear everyone for the first time. <laughs> My name is Erin O'Kane and I was co-principal cellist for the URSO this semester. I wanted to talk a bit about the recording process as we were unable to do a live performance. This was my first experience recording with an orchestra and I learned a lot about the time and effort required by everyone involved. There was a lot of preparation by the musicians which included meaningful rehearsals, extra sectionals, and individual practice. Leading the cello section for the Debussy in Beethoven pieces was a very rewarding experience. I wanted to thank Dr. Waddell for this opportunity and the orchestra members for your time and effort put into these recordings. I'm especially thankful for the audio and music engineers that spent many hours making these recordings as professional as possible. I'm so excited to listen to the final product. Thanks everyone. I really enjoyed recording our performances this semester. I found it really interesting to see um, what needed to be taken into account, such as my placement and uh, mic choice and what needed to be done to ensure that uh, we got a good recording. On top of that, it was just a lot of fun to um, learn about the process that orchestras go through um, when recording music. Hi everyone, this is the Erko Viola section and uh, we just wanted to reflect on the s semester and how great it was to uh, have an on-campus experience even though everything uh, was generally online. Yeah, with everything being online, we weren't limited at all. We still got to experience a lot of new things. Like for me personally, that was my first time playing in a professional recording studio. So yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, on top of that, I'm, I'm really glad um, we played the repertoire that we did. I know that Tchaikovsky is one of my favorites, so I'm really glad that we got to play a song by him. And for my first semester at Rochester, especially with COVID going on, I didn't really know what to expect. But getting to rehearse in person with a great group of people really allowed me to become a member of the community. Orchestra this semester really had us starting to open our minds and ears and really listen to what else was going on. There's so much progress we can make on playing like a chamber ensemble, and I'm really looking forward to working on it more next semester. Recording was a super fun experience because we got to work with some really good equipment and see how professionals record their performances as well. The virtual postcards were a really, really nice idea, and it allowed us to contribute in our own ways some positivity and hope to those in need of it. I think that despite it being easy to have a negative outlook on this semester due to the COVID-19 restrictions, that it's amazing how much the University of Rochester orchestras were able to thrive despite all of the restrictions. We get to have new experiences, such as collaboration with the Oberlin orchestras, and we got to continue to have in-person rehearsals and even have our soloist play with us. So in general, I think that even though it was a difficult semester, it was definitely worth it and very rewarding. It's been a wild nine months, especially for those of us 
who have seen despair and suffering in our families and communities, those who we cherish forever in our hearts. And this compels me to be even more thankful of us that in spite of uncertainty, we were still able to unite and support each other, even in the smallest ways, as we continue our endeavors to change the world for the better. This process and tonight's product would not be possible without the help of literally hundreds of people. First, I must extend a very heartfelt thank you to my colleague and friend, Stephen Rusner. Without his tireless work on this and the Oberlin projects, this simply would not have been possible. Stephen, thank you for the hours and hours and hours of dedication that you poured into this project and bringing our artistic vision to life. Secondly, I want to thank our colleagues at Oberlin Conservatory and especially my colleague and friend, Tiffany Chang. From the beginning, we were on board with creating something meaningful and special for our students. Even though walls came up due to COVID-19, we found a way to tear them down again and take advantage of this digital age to connect our campus communities and musicians. This is the beginning of a beautiful partnership and we cannot wait until it is safe for our orchestras to meet and perform face to face. I also want to thank our two piano soloists, Jacob Rose and Dr. Anna Maiman. Anna, thank you for stepping in at the last minute to learn this challenging and rarely performed work. It was truly a pleasure to work with you and to record one of Clara's compositions. I'd also like to thank our videographers, our fantastic stage crew, event and classroom management, and Jimmy Warlick, who helped to wrangle all this together, as well as our department chair, Dr. Matt Bailey Shea, who supported me in executing this crazy idea and bringing it to life. Thank you to Ashley Smith and UR Advancement for helping us with this fundraiser, and to Lori Packer and Jeanette Colby for the social media support and stories. I'd also like to thank our orchestra musicians for their patience and positive attitude. This was a scary and tiring semester, a very different semester, but I think together we created experience that we have all learned and benefited from and that we will never forget. You may not remember what we played in orchestra in fall 2018. We found out that was true, <laughs> but we will remember and cherish this experience for the rest of our lives. Finally, thank you to you, our audience, for your support. Whether in person or digital, an orchestra is nothing without its audience and our community. Thank you for watching tonight and thank you for helping us to make our dreams a reality by contributing whatever you can to our fundraiser. Finally, we hope you enjoy this beautiful performance of Tchaikovsky's Serenade for Strings by our chamber orchestra. Thank you for joining us this evening. We wish you health, happiness, and a beautiful and meaningful holiday season.